Hi yogis, welcome to Yoga Sculpt on our yoga slide playlist. This has been getting some pretty good response and I'm having fun doing it, so let's just keep this going. I got a challenge from my friend Grant. <laughs> We've been doing yoga together for about 14 years now and he challenged me to do a, a longer yoga sock or yoga slide video. So I accept your challenge, Grant. And <laughs> this is what we're going to do today. Two socks. I recommend having some thicker athletic socks, not the thin trouser socks, because we will be doing quite a bit of vigorous sliding on a hard surface floor. If you don't have a hard surface floor, you can get gliders, athletic or sport gliders, uh, on Amazon. There's dozens of them. It's just basically a slick plastic surface, so you can put your feet on it and then glide on the carpet. We're also going to use two yoga blocks and we are going to have two hand towels similar to our last couple of sock yoga videos. OMG, lots of props. What do we have planned for today? <laughs> here's, the, um, here's the plan. We're going to basically deconstruct a long sequence. We're going to kind of break it down, work on the individual components. Maybe take one or two short rests, no more than a minute, and then we're going to put it all together at the end. This is going to cover, um, this is going to work the entire body, everything, core, back, arms, legs, everything. So let's get started. The way I have the camera angled, it's looking at the floor because that's where we're going we're gonna to do most of our work. But um, there'll be a starting warm-up sequence where we'll be, we'll be doing some sock yoga sun salutations, so my head will be Head will be cut off, so I apologize for that up front. So, got your socks on, ready to go? Let's get started. Let's start standing. You can move your blocks off to the side and your towels for now, just working with the socks. Standing in your mountain pose. And let's inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, come down to a forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway forward. I'll angle myself a little bit here. And then push your hands into the floor. Start to slide your feet back towards a downward facing dog. Go slow. Try to hold the down dog as long as you can, but the feet are still sliding back. And once you've come wider than a downward dog, then just shift into a plank pose and then up into an upward facing dog. And then exhale, lift your hips, keep your hips hiking up as you slide your feet back under you into a forward fold. Push down with the feet and rise up to stand, inhale, arms reach up. Two more times. Exhale, forward and down, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, inhale, lengthen halfway forward. Place your hands down, push your hands into the floor, start to slide the feet back into a downward facing dog. Your feet are continuously sliding, but they're going slowly. And once you feel like you're coming out of the down dog, then just go ahead and shift into a plank position and come right into an upward dog with your toes curled under. And then your hips high up as your feet slide in underneath your hips to a forward fold. Push down into the feet and rise up to stand. Inhale, the arms reach up overhead. Last time, exhale forward and down. Hands touch the floor. Bend the knees, inhale, reach the spine forward. Place the hands down, spread the fingers, slide the feet back, holding downward dog. Even though the feet are sliding, you're trying to slow the sliding down a little bit, trying to control it until your feet are far enough back that you can come into a plank pose. Inhale to your upward facing dog, toes are curled under. Exhale, pike the hips up, slide the feet under you. Forward fold, push down into the feet and rise up to stand. Inhale, the arms reach up and hands to the heart, exhale. Okay, next sequence will be a standing sequence, so just the socks here. I'll mirror you. Hi, there's my head. <laughs> I'll mirror you for this one, okay? So, because I'm facing you. So, just standing here in mountain pose. Let's start to slide the right foot away from you, coming into a side lunge. So you can keep both feet connected to the floor the whole time. Push down into your standing foot, slide the right foot back in, and then keep sliding it behind you into a curtsy lunge. 
Your left arm comes down, your right arm reaches up and over. And now slide your right leg all the way around to the right and in front of you, your arms reach forward. You're in a chair pose in your left leg. And then slide the right foot back to a lunge. Stay upright in your upper body. Reach up through your arms. Twist this to the left. And then come back up with your arms up and come into a warrior two. So this is a new one for us for sock yoga. But it's an interesting way to explore the pose because, again, it's like you've got one foot on a dock and the other foot is on a boat. And you're trying to hug in, just use muscular effort to hug the limbs in energetically or isometrically. Let's come back to a lunge, lift your back heel, and slide your right foot in, okay? So we're doing that nice and slow. So other side, slide your left leg out. Your heel is in contact with the floor in the side lunge. And then slide the left foot all the way over to the right behind you into a curtsy lunge. Your left arm is up, right arm is down. And then circle your leg on the floor around and in front of you. Heel is pressing forward. You're in a chair pose on the right leg. And then slide the left foot back to a lunge. Crescent lunge, your arms reach up. And then you twist this to the right. Upper body is twisting. And then rotate around into a warrior two, lowering your back heel. And pause here. So I've referenced this imagery before. It's like Bambi on ice. And so you have to use more muscular effort to just hug in towards the midline. Make sure that the knee is pointing forward, your right knee. And then come back to a crescent, lifting the heel back heel, slide the back foot in. Let's go through that sequence. Hi, go through that sequence one more time, okay? Arms reach up, slowly slide the right leg out. So we're doing this slow so we can maintain control and then keep the foot in contact with the floor, slide the right foot behind you to the left, come into a curtsy lunge. And then swing your leg around in a circle until it's in front of you. Sink back in your chair, your right heel is forward, and then slide the right foot back to a crescent. Lunge, your arms reach up. Let's twist this to the left. Inhale, both of your arms reach up. Exhale, lower your right heel, warrior two. Now you're really trying to push down into the feet and use the effort in your legs to hug everything in. So your feet just don't go splaying out to the side. And then let's rotate the hip forward, right hip forward, arms up, and slide the right heel in, come into chair. Slide your left heel out to the side, so you're coming into a side lunge, and then slide the left foot over to the right. Curtsy lunge, there's a side bend here to the right. Slide your foot around in a circle, out to the side and forward. Your heel is forward, you're in a chair pose in your, left, in your right leg, and then slide the left foot back. Crescent. Arms reach up, inhale, twist this to the right, exhale. Rotate up and around to warrior two, hold this for just a moment. So this back foot's really gonna wanna slip out from under you and you've got to work your legs more. I find this really interesting because we can't be passive in our legs in this pose now. So it's really informing us how to hold the pose steady even when we're not wearing socks. Let's come back to a crescent warrior, arms reach up, and slide your left foot in. Okay, take a breath. <laughs> You're just in chair pose with the hands on your legs here. Just give yourself a breather. We're not even close to being through with this sequence yet. Okay, next one's gonna involve a side plank. So I'll mirror you again. Back in your chair pose. Slide your right heel out, just like we did in the beginning, but stay here, and you're gonna get lower and lower and lower until you can bring your left hand down out to the side. I'm gonna my blocks here. Left hand under the shoulder, and then slide your left foot out to the right until you're in a side plank. I hope I didn't mention that this was gonna be easy. <laughs> I don't wanna do any false advertising. Now you're gonna scissor your legs. One goes forward, one goes back, and then you switch the other way. One forward, one back. They may not be able to move, very far, do the best you can, and then bring the legs together. Slide your left foot, your inner leg back under you, and then you're going to swing your right leg back until you're in a runner's lunge. So you have the left foot under you, I'm mirroring you, and you have your right leg back. And then slide your left foot back to a plank pose. 
go through your mountain climber. So you just alternate bending one knee as you slide that foot under. The other leg is in plank. Just going slow, classic core work here. And then three, two, one. Slide your left foot under you. Slide your right foot under you. Rise all the way up to stand. Reach up through the arms and come back into your chair pose. Slide your left heel out to the side. We're going to get lower and lower and lower. Keep the weight in the heel of your right foot until your right hand can come down just beyond the shoulder. And then you'll slide your right leg out to the left. Here we are, side plank. Doesn't matter which leg goes first. One leg is going to swing to the front and the other to the back. And then you switch it. So this is a ton of core control, especially obliques. <laughs> Do your best to keep breathing. Both of your legs straight off to the side. Slide the right foot back under you. Hands come just under your shoulders. And your left leg slides back now. And you're in a runner's lunge with your left leg back. And now push your hands down and slide your right foot back to a plank. And then nice and slow and controlled mountain climbers. Just alternate, sliding your feet forward and back. Let's go for four, three, two, one. Slide your left foot all the way forward. And then your right foot. Push into your feet, rise up to stand. Arms reach up. And arms down by your side. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> and then um, we'll move on. But in between, Let's just do a shoulder release. So interlace the fingers behind you, let the head soften down and your arms move away from your back. And I usually do this with my knees bent to minimize any over stretching in the hamstrings. We will stretch the hamstrings towards the end. All right, is your heart rate up? Is your breath really moving? Lower your arms down. Hands on your thighs, come back up. Okay, ready? We're gonna do that side plank sequence one more time. So starting with the right heel, slide it out. Get lower and lower in your left leg. Keep the weight in the heel until the left hand can come out to the side and you can slide your left leg out to meet the right. Side plank, all right? Just a few times scissoring your legs. Keep them straight. Can you move them? Simultaneously, I know this is a lot of effort. One more time. And then legs are together. Slide the left foot back under you. Hands come forward under the shoulder, slide your right leg back and come into a runner's lunge. So you have the knee over the ankle. And then plant your hands down and slide your left foot back. Nice and slow mountain climbers. Keep breathing. Three, two, one. Right foot steps or slides forward, that is. Left foot slides forward. Push into the feet, rise up to stand. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Come back down, hands on the thighs. Last time, left leg slides out into a nice, slow side lunge. And your hips go down and down. Weight is in the heel, weight's in the heel. And then the right hand comes down off to the side and your right leg slides over to meet your left leg. Okay, here we go. Back and forth. <laughs> Back and forth, nice and slow. Your feet stay in contact with the floor. And can, this is tricky, but can you move your legs simultaneously? Mm -hmm. Bring your legs together. Slide the right foot under you. Hands under the shoulders. Slide your right leg behind you. Come into a runner's lunge. All right, hands under the shoulders and then slide your right foot back to plank pose. Last time, mountain climbers. If you want to speed it up here, choo, 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 you can. Just crank up the upper just a little bit. Four, three, two, one. Left foot slides under, right foot slides under. Squat, pause. Just take a breather. Nice, slow, deep breaths. All right, now, we can't do a sock yoga without doing some of that primal influence, which is the beast to crab rolls. 
You know I love those. <laughs> so let's just do three of them leading with the right foot and then three leading with the left foot. And then we'll do three more on each foot, but we'll add some more gliding motion with the feet. Okay, got your breath back. Beast to crab, remember these? You can start on all fours if you want to. And we're gonna be hovering the knees. So your toes are curled under. We're gonna lead with the right foot. So I'm not gonna mirror you for this one because we will be revolving around in a circle and my brain will get a little scrambled <laughs> if I try to mirror you and turn at the same time. So I'm not gonna mirror you for this one, okay? So toes are curled under, your knees are hovering, this is your beast pose. You slide the right foot outside the right hand, and then you slide the left foot directly under you, kind of where your right hand is, and then all the way through, and your right arm comes around, and now you're in your crab pose. So we call this also a reverse tabletop. And then you lead with the right foot. As the left arm comes around, the right foot slides under, and you're back in your beast, but you're facing a different direction. Okay, maybe off to the side now. Slide your right foot outside the right hand, Slide the left leg all the way under you, and the left hand around. And now we're in our crab, and then your right foot slides under as the left arm comes around, back in your beast, one more time, right foot slides over outside the hand, left foot slides under, right hand comes around. And then keep going, right foot slides under as the left arm comes around, back in the beast. I think that was three, but I want to have you facing forward, so one more time. Right foot slides outside the right hand, Left foot slides under, right arm comes around. Right foot slides under, left arm comes around. Oops, I got you facing the other way. Let me just turn around. <laughs> that didn't work out quite so well. I'm trying to do three times around, but it might end up being four. Let's lead with the left foot now. So, starting in all fours, curl your toes under, hover your knees. Slide your left foot outside your left hand. Feet stay in contact with the floor the whole time. Slide your right foot under you as your left arm comes around. This is your crab. Slide your left foot under you as the right arm comes around into your beast. Left foot, slide outside the hand. Right foot slides under, left arm comes around. There's reverse table or crab. Left foot slides under, right arm comes around. One more time through. Left foot outside the left hand. Right foot slides under, left arm comes around. Left foot slides under as the right arm comes around. And because we did four last time, we'll just even that up. Left foot outside the left hand, right foot slides under, left foot slides under, right arm around, and here we are. And I didn't get you facing forward, so just turn around. <laughs> it worked out better when I did it without a camera, as usual. Interlace the fingers behind you and press the knuckles down, just lengthening out through the front of the shoulders. Maybe let the head tilt from side to side. Okay, so we're gonna do that same sequence. I'll limit it to three times, leading with each leg. I'll try to keep count while I'm talking at the same time. <laughs> and we're going to add a little bit more work sliding the legs once we get into beast pose and crab pose, okay? So hands to the floor, starting in your beast. Curl your toes under, hover your knees. Slide your right foot outside the right hand. Slide your left foot under, come into your crab. Pause here. So have the wrists under your shoulders. Your fingers are turned out a little bit. And then you'll just alternate, sliding your heels on the floor. Oh my goodness, keep the hips up off the floor. Both the heels under you, lead with the right foot. As your left arm comes around, your right foot slides under your back and your beast. Stay here, mountain climbers. But your legs don't go all the way straight. Keep a little bend in your knees the whole time. All right, and then right foot slides outside the right hand. Left foot under, back into your crab. Slide through the heels, alternate sliding them forward and back. Four, three, two, one. You lead, both, both heels are under your knees. Lead with the right foot under, your left arm comes around. And you're in your beast. Four, three, two, one. Now one more time. Right foot slides outside the hand. Left foot slides under, you're in your crab. Alternate, sliding your heels forward and back. Four, three, two, one. Both heels under your knees. Lead with the right leg under and the left arm around. Oh, it worked out better this time. <laughs> Beast pose, slide in the mountain climbers. Four, three, two, one. Let's go right into the left side, no rest. Left foot outside the left hand. 
the right leg slides under. You're in your crab, slide through the heels. Lift hips stay up, sliding your one leg forward at a time, both heels under you. Lead with your left leg. So right arm comes around, left leg under your back in your beast, mountain climbers. Mm -hmm. Keep the shoulders right over your wrists. Four, three, two, one. Left foot outside the left hand. Right leg slides up here. Crab pose. Ready? Slide your heels forward. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. And then left leg slides under. Mm, right arm comes around. Four, three, two, one. Was that three? Let's do one more just in case I'm wrong. Left foot slides out. It's better to do too many than too little. Right leg slides under. Back in your crab. Slide your heels forward and back. Hips don't come down to the floor. Bring both the heels under you. Left foot slide under, right arm comes around, east, and slide. Four, three, two, and one. Both of your heels come down. Take the back of your hands to your thighs. Your fingers point in and press down. Just stretching, counter, closing the wrists here, stretching through the wrists. Interlace your fingers and press your arms up overhead. Okay, take a breath. Are you ready to move on? We're gonna add the blocks now. So, grab your blocks. I'm breathing, can you tell? Thanks, Grant. <laughs> You've got my, my breath going, my heart rate going. I always have to accept his yoga challenges to save face. <laughs> so, um, here's the plan. We're going to keep the hands on the blocks, and we're going to slide in and out of a reverse plank and a forward fold, and then we're going to add some splits to it, okay? So, get the feet under you, hands on blocks, and then walk, walk back a little bit. You're not going to move your blocks, I'm just going to move mine so that I stay in the camera shot. And then you're in a kind of a reverse table and slide your feet forward. Come into a reverse plank, so have the shoulders over your wrists. I have my fingers curled over the edge of the blocks and I'm lifting my hips and pointing my feet forward. And then slide the heels back, keep the legs straight and slide the hips back, heels back, and keep the hips hovering. You won't be able to see it because the blocks are in the way, but my hips are hovering, this is a lot of core. And then slide your heels forward and lift up through the hips. So that's it, just moving out of reverse plank to Dandasana staff pose. Slide forward. Lift your chest. Don't let your chest just concave in. Lift it up. Slide your heels back. Keep the hips hovering. And your hips are lifted. One more. These are tough. Slide forward. Lift your hips. Point your toes forward. And slide your hips back and keep them lifted. And lower down. Cross one arm in front of you. Pin it in place with the other forearm. Just getting through the deltoids here. And then the other arm, pull it back. You already know, when we add all of these together, <laughs> it's going to be one long continuous flow and it's going to be tough, but there'll be a, long, a stretch afterwards. So that will be deserved. And then one arm comes up, hold on to the elbow and pull the forearm back behind you. Try not to let the head tilt forward too much. And then hold on to the other elbow. Press the forearm down your back. Keep the elbow pointing up. Use your hand that's holding the elbow to draw that arm in. Head is just over the spine. Release that down. Right, uh, circle through your wrists. Okay. Big breath. Splits. So your feet come under you. So we're going to start in. Hands on the block. Start in the lunge. Have the right foot under you, and slide the left leg back. And then slide your right leg forward. So you have both legs mostly straight. You might need a little bend in one knee or the other knee. Just don't hyperextend your knees. And now we're going to pipe the hips up and glide the feet under us, and then switch sides. So pull the feet in, scissor them in, your hips pike up, and then you slide your left leg forward and your right leg. Back. You're on the heel of your front foot. Okay, that's it. I'm going to bring my blocks up a little bit higher. I've got short arms, so I'm on the medium height of my blocks. 
hands. Okay, ready? Slide your heels and your feet under you as your hips hike up, and then your right leg goes forward and your left leg goes back into your splits. And then again, pull the legs in. Keep the legs mostly straight. Can you move your feet at the same time? So it's not like inchworming your legs in. You're pulling them in in a fluid, gliding motion. One more time with the right leg forward. Mm -hmm. And then, last time, glide the legs in, hips up, and then left leg forward in your splits. And then legs glide under you. Forward fold, just be here for a moment. Hands can be on blocks or not. Mm -hmm. And come down to your knees. All right, time for the towels. I think those of you who have done these sock yoga videos know it's coming. It's only April in Western Washington. It's not that cold, warm out. It's only 40 degrees, but I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, I might be procrastinating a little bit. So, let's start with some push-ups, and then we'll do a slightly easier sequence. We're starting to take this down a little bit, even though there's still effort. So, hands and knees, hands are on your hand towels. Start to slide your hands forward so you're in a kneeling push-up position. Take the right arm out, bend the elbows, come down into a push-up, slide the right arm under you. Take the left arm out, come down to a push-up, slide the left arm under you, and take it back to a child's pose, just for one breath. Slide, come back forward, not sliding, just shifting forward. Right arm slides out to the side, push-up position, come back in. So you're sliding one hand out and then in. Left arm slides out, push-up, slide it back in, back into child's pose. Shift forward again, let's do two more each side. So right arm slides out, lower in the push-up, come back up. Left arm slides out, lower down, push-up, back into child's pose. And then shift forward one more time. Right arm out, push-up, come in. Left arm out, ah, push-up, come in, back into child's pose. Mm. And then come up. Okay, now, we're going to sit with our legs forward. We did this one in the first, might have been the first sock yoga video. I kind of like it. It's not too intense. It's some core work, a little bit of arm and back work, just a little bit. Yeah. So let's slide the arms forward into a Paschimottanasana or a forward bend. S circle the arms out to the side. Lean back with the upper body, like you're going to lie all the way back, and slide your hands out into a T-shape. Pull your arms in, come up. Slide forward, slide your hands forward into a forward bend. Circle your arms out as you come up, and then slide your hands out into a T-shape as you lie back. Slide your hands in to press back up, and again. Hinge forward, slide your hands forward. Circle your arms out, push down in the hands as you come up. Slide your hands out into a T as you lie back. Slide your arms in as you press up. How about two more? Slide forward. Flex through your ankles. Circle the arms out as you come up right in the spine. Slide your arms out as you lower down. Slide your hands back in as you come up. All right, one more sequence that is. <laughs> so I'm going to just open up my hand towels a tiny bit. We're going to have one underneath your shoulder blades and the other one is going to be under your hips and then you're also going to grab a block. Oh my. I'm going to be, start combining props now. You know it's going to be tricky. It's not. I'm lying. It's not really that tricky. You might want to watch for this first one though because you won't be able to see me once you're in a supine position. So one towel under your shoulder blades one is under your hips, and just check that you can kind of swivel your hips around here. I want the towel there so that you're um, even more slippery on the floor, because we're basically going to be doing this action, right? 
You can give it a try. You're not just swiveling your hips. Hold the block here in your hands. You're swiveling your hips and your shoulder blades, your upper back at the same time. Just kind of like writhing and wriggling from side to side. That's the action. And then we're going to add something special here with the block. So place the block between your feet and really squeeze it in because we don't want to drop it, <laughs> especially when the block is right over your pelvis. Now take your block a little bit more forward. Push the soles of the feet into the block and your knees are wide. Your block is just hovering off of the floor. And you've got to really work pushing the legs in, the feet into the block. And it's going to work your inner thighs. Now take the hands behind your head and then start to wriggle and writhe. Just swiveling the hips and the upper back as you squeeze the block. And you're just going into this little swaying side to side action. So we're getting some core and we're getting some inner thighs, some hip flexors. And then keep squeezing the block. Take the block more over your pelvis. Keep pushing the feet into the block and straighten your legs up towards the ceiling. So there's an external rotation in your legs. Keep squeezing the block with your feet. Take your knees wide. Start to lower the blocks. I know this is dangerous territory. So now let's take the block more forward. Take your legs a little more forward. They're still bent at the knees. But they're more forward now. This can be more work in the core. Swivel side to side. You're still hovering the block a few inches off the floor. You're squeezing the heck out of it with your feet. Side to side, wriggling and writhing. You're shortening one side of the waist and then the other. And then back through center, take the block over your hips. Slowly push the soles of the feet into the block. Straighten your legs up. There's an outward turning of your knees. And then bend the knees again. One more, you ready? Swivel, so you're just hovering the block. Take the block more forward of the pelvis. The more forward it is, the harder. Don't let your lumbar spine hike way up off of the floor. And it's hard to hold that block in your feet, right? It's a lot of leg work. Wriggling back and forth, and then unwind. You can just hold the block in your hands. Ah, take your feet down, and let the hands rest on your belly. Okay, this is our rest. And now for the challenge. That wasn't challenging enough, right? <laughs> We're gonna go for the full, the full, the full kitten caboodle, I think is the technical term for it. We're gonna add all of those sequences together. So we've got standing, we've got lunging, we've got splits, and then we've got that on our back. Push-ups up and then on our back. Okay? So move your blocks out of the way, move your hand towels out of the way. Okay, I just had to double check my notes and hopefully I won't miss anything. Let's start with our sun salutations, okay? So here we go. Sorry, my head will be cut off for a minute or so. <laughs> Follow my voice. Inhale, your arms reach up overhead. Exhale, come forward and down. Let's just do one of each on each side. Bend your knees, lengthen halfway forward. Aren't you relieved? And exhale, start, push your hands to the floor, start to slide your feet back into a downward facing dog. You're just pausing. You're trying to slow the movement down as much as you can by using your core, using your arm strength, and then shift into a plank pose. Come into upward dog. We're skipping the chaturanga, just coming right into up dog with the toes curled under. And then pike your hips up, slide the feet under you. Back into Uttanasana and then push into your feet and rise up to stand. Okay, so side to side action. I'll mirror you for this one. So slide your right heel out to the side into a side lunge. Slide the foot behind you and over to the left and you do a side bend. And then circle the leg around to the right and in front of you, heel is forward. You're in a chair pose in your left leg, arms reach forward, and then slide your right foot back to a lunge. Reach your arms up. Take this to a twist to the left. Inhale, both arms reach up. Exhale, warrior two, lowering your back heel down. Inhale, back up to a crescent. Slide the right heel under you into chair pose. Left leg slides out to the side. Left leg slides behind you and over to the right, coming to a side bend. Left leg slides around in a circle and in front of you. Press the heel forward, come into a chair pose. 
Slide the left leg back, crescent warrior. Twist this to the right. And then come back up into crescent, warrior two, lowering your back heel. Lift your back heel to crescent. Slide your back foot in. Side plank. Slide your right heel out to the side. Get lower and lower and lower in your left leg until the left hand can come out to the side. Side plank. Slide the left leg out to meet the right leg. Scissor your legs a few times, a couple more times, scissoring forward and back. Slide the left leg back under you, hands to the floor under your shoulders. Slide your right leg back. Come into a runner's lunge, so check that your shin is vertical. And then slide your left foot back and just do your mountain climbers for four, three, two, one. Slide the right foot under you in a lunge. Slide the left foot under you. Push into your feet, rise up to stand, inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Bend your knees, hands on your legs. Slide your left heel out to the side. Coming into a side lunge, get lower and lower and lower and lower until the right hand can come out to the side and you slide your right foot out to meet the left. Side plank, forward and back with the feet. And a couple more times, both feet together. Right foot slides under you. Hands come under the shoulders. Slide your left leg back. Runner's lunge. Slide the right leg back. Mountain climbers for four, three, two, one. Left foot slides under you into a lunge. Right foot slides under you. Then come into a squat. Turn your toes out and your knees out. We're going to do our uh, beast to crab rolls. Three times around, three times around the other way, and then we add the foot gliding. Three times. Ready? Let's get back a little bit. Start in your beast. Your knees are hovering. Your toes are curled under. I'm not going to mirror you. Right foot outside the right hand. Left foot slides under. Right arm comes around. So this is our crab. Slide your right foot under. Left arm around into your beast. Right back into it. Right foot slides outside the hand. Left foot slides under. You're in your crab. Right foot slides under. Left arm comes around. This is your beast. One more time. Right foot slides outside the hand. Left foot slides under you as the right arm comes around into your crab. Right foot slides under as the left arm comes around. This is your beast. Right into the left side. Left foot slides outside the left hand. Right foot slides under you into your crab. Left foot slides under. Right arm comes around facing down. Left foot slides outside the left hand. Right foot slides under as the arm comes around. And then the left foot slides under, right hand to the floor one more time. Left foot outside the left hand. Right leg slides under, left arm comes around. Left foot slides under you, right arm comes around. This is your beast, lower down. Pause, push the back of the hands down onto the thighs. Breathe. <laughs> Notice I'm not joking as much because now it's getting serious. <laughs> Okay, I gotta keep it lighthearted a little bit. I am like really breathing here. All right, we're gonna do those beast of crab rolls, three times to each side, adding the foot sliding. Let's do it. I'm gonna go move continuously. We're not gonna rest until we get to the next sequence, okay? Hands to the floor, beast pose. Left foot is going to lead. Sorry, right foot's gonna lead. Right foot slides outside the right hand. Left foot slides on the right arm comes around. You're in your upper up facing upward position. Slide your heels forward and back. Forward and back. One more breath. And then right foot slides under. Left arm comes around. You're in your beast, face down, mountain climbers. So for five, four, three, two, one. And the right foot slides outside the right hand. Left foot slides under. You're in your crab. Slide through your heels. If you want to do both at the same time. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's harder. And then right leg leads, left arm comes around, you're in your beast, mountain climbers. Mm -hmm. Why not? Do both at the same time. It's just interesting. One more time. Right foot slides outside the right hand. Left foot slides in, the right arm comes around. And in your upward facing, sliding your heels, maybe together, maybe separately. Both heels under your knees. 
Leave with the right foot, it comes under as the left arm comes around into these mountain climbers. All right, halfway there. We're going to go leading with the left leg. Slide the left foot outside the left hand. Right arm comes around. Maybe both heels at the same time. Can you keep the hips hovering? One more. Lead with the left leg as the right arm comes around. Back in your beast. Slide through the feet. All right, only two more to go. Left foot outside the left hand. The right leg comes under. You're in your crown. Maybe alternate. I've decided that I'm going to alternate first. Alternate slide in the heels. And the next time around, I'm going to do both at the same time. And then, last time, left leg around. Mm. Right hand to the floor. And your beast, maybe both feet at the same time. One more. Left foot slides out. Right leg slides under. Crab. Now, can you do both heels? This is the last time through. We're almost there. Both heels come under you. Left leg slides up, your right arm comes around. And last time in your mountain climbers. And four, three, two, one. Lower your knees down. Interlace the fingers behind you. Stretch out. I thought it would be pretty cool to go through that entire, entire practice without any breaks at all. It'd be especially cruel to me. So, <laughs> all right. Blocks. Now, uh, staff pose to reverse plank. So you have the blocks by your side. Your legs are forward. Are you ready? I'm gonna have the blocks on the position here. Okay. Your fingers can kind of hang over the edge here. I think it's a little better for a grip. And your shoulders stay over your wrists. So start to slide your heels forward and lift your hips and come into a reverse plank. And then slide your heels back, your hips come under you and keep your hips hovering. Your hips are a little back behind you a bit. And then slide your heels forward. Your heels stay in contact with the floor the whole time. Slide your hips back and keep them lifted. Slide forward through the heels, lift up. Slide the hips back, they come under you and then slightly back as the hips are lifted. And then one more time, slide forward, lift up through the hips, reverse plank, slide back and lift the hips and lower the hips down. <sighs> Circle through the wrists. Circle around the other way. Okay, we have splits. This is good news, right? Because then we get to stretch <laughs> while we do core work. So I'm going to just pop my feet under me. And then as I slide my left leg back, my right leg comes forward into splits. And notice I have my blocks a little bit higher this time because I like having that little extra height. I have short arms. Slide your heels simultaneously as your hips hike up. And then other way, left heel forward, hmm. right leg back splits. And then slide and you're pushing down as you slide and hips come up. And then the right leg forward, hmm. left leg back. Uh-huh, slide in, left leg forward, and the splits. We got one more in us, slide in. If sliding is just getting too intense, you can always just walk your feet in. Right leg forward, this is the last one. Push down as you slide in, pack your hips up. Left leg forward, mm-hmm. Slide the feet under you. Pause here. Uttanasana. Hands could be on blocks or not. I'm keeping the rest a little bit shorter. Get some cardio yoga here, even though we're not jumping around. And then we're going to move the blocks off to the side and grab our towels. Okay, first one, I'm just going to have the towels wide enough for my hands to fit on. We're going to start with our push-ups, and then we'll do our seated forward bend to lying back. Okay. So I'll angle myself a little bit here. And you can have a blanket under your knees, by the way, if you want to pause me. Now that you know what's up, you can pause me and put a blanket under your knees for some cushion, if you'd like. All right, hands under, hands on your hand towels. Shift forward into a kneeling plank. You can do this on your toes if you really, really want. 
want to. Slide your right hand out, come into a push-up, press back up. Slide your left hand out, lower into a push-up, press the left hand in. Hips back into a child's pose. Come back forward, kneeling plank. Right hand slides out, inhale in. Exhale, left hand, inhale in. Back to child's pose, exhale. Inhale forward, right hand out, exhale, inhale in. Exhale, left hand out, come down, inhale in. Exhale, child's pose, one more. Come forward, inhale, shoulders over wrists, right hand out, exhale, inhale up, let's just slide the hand in. Left hand out, exhale, inhale, slide that hand in. Exhale, the child's pose. <sighs> come on up. Okay, take a seat. Have the hands by your side. Slide your hands forward. Yay! Forward fold. And then slide the arms out in a circle as you come upright, and then lean back as your hands glide out to the side in the T-shape. Push down in the hands as you slide back up. Slide your hands forward. Flex your ankles. Slide the arms out in a circle. Come back upright. Slide the hands out into a cross as you lower down. Push the hands down, slide back up, and forward. Having fun? Slide forward. I know it's excruciating but fun at the same time, right? Slide back up. I know you guys like it because I'm getting some better views on these slider series. This is the last one. Come up, inhale, and there we go. Okay, you know there's one more to go. Two towels and a block. So one towel, we're going to open it up a little bit more so it can completely be under your shoulder blades and the other one is under your hips and you're going to grab a one block. Uh, I think we might also need to finish up with the glute series, glute bridge series. We showed up so we might as well, right? Alright, so lie down. And Start with just holding onto the block and just let yourself wriggle, wriggle and writhe side to side. Your feet are together, your knees are out wide, kind of like frog legs, just pressing side to side. Now, if it was too intense having the block between your feet, don't use the block. You're going to get a lot more inner thigh workout with the block, so just release that. Decide if you want the block. Place it between your feet. If you'd rather lose the socks, for a moment so you have better grip on the block you can. I know <laughs> you're probably a little hesitant about having this block here in a precarious position over the pelvis. So keep your knees wide, push the feet into the block to really work the inner thighs. And then lower the block down so it's right off of the floor, just hovering off of the floor, hands under your head. And then now go back to your writhing side to side. So you're swiveling at the hips and you're also sliding the shoulder blades side to side. Getting into that wriggle, writhing motion. Push the feet into the block. Block is just barely off of the floor. Your head is up, an inch off the floor, and now come through center. Take the block over your pelvis. Squeeze the block and straighten the legs. Your knees are still turned out, so you're trying to push the whole soles of the feet into the block. Keep pressing the block. Start to bend the knees out wide again. Lower the block. And do that again. So up should be a lot of inner thigh work. My inner thighs are shaking. Press the feet into the block and lower it down. Do one more. Push the feet into the block. Lift and slowly lower. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Stay here one more time. Take the block a little more forward. Knees wide. Block is hovering. And just a few more rounds of this. Swiggling side to side. Oh, keep pressing the feet into the block. I know you really want to let it go because I do too. Mm, and just do four, three, two, one. Oh my goodness, lower the block. <laughs> you can even place your feet on the block here if you want, just get a little bit of lift and just relax for a moment. Mm. So we did a lot of upper body, a lot of core, a lot of inner thigh, some quad, actually a bit of quad. We didn't do a great deal of glutes. So let's do a great deal of glutes. <laughs> and that's what we're here for, right? Not just the glutes, but just getting a good overall workout. So 
Feet on the floor, under your knees, arms are by your side. You can actually lose the towels. Now if you want to, we don't need them. We're just gonna be working with sliding the heels. Let's lift the hips up into bridge. Slide one heel forward, and then back in. And the other heel forward, and then back in your hips. Stay lifted. Push down into the hands, slide both of your heels forward, slide both of them back in. And again, first one leg forward, back under, and the other leg forward, back in. Both feet forward, both heels slide back in. And again, right leg forward, left leg forward and back. Both heels forward and back. Let's do it two more times. Right leg only, left leg only. You gotta push down into the heel as you're sliding, both heels. And in one more. Right leg forward and back. Left leg forward and back. Push down through the upper arm bones. Both heels forward, both heels in. Oh my goodness, let it go down. Take your right leg up into the air and extend your left leg forward. You can use your hand towel here like a yoga strap. So open the towel up all the way and put it around the ball of your right foot and then hold on. If it's just not enough length, if your towel is too short, you can interlace your fingers behind the thigh. Breathe here. Yes, it is. The exertion part of the practice is done. And now we're just stretching. Sutta Parangustasana, which means reclined hand to big toe pose. However, you don't have to take that literally. You don't have to hold on to your big toe. Oftentimes we do modify by using a prop, such as a strap. Hmm. Let's release the towel. Bend the left knee, cross the right ankle over the left thigh, and bring the left thigh towards you. You can either interlace your fingers behind the left thigh and pull that left leg in towards you. If it's just too intense of a stretch, you can use your hand towel. Hook it behind the left thigh and then just hold on to it with your hands. If you're not accustomed to stretching, this might feel intense. So modify by having the hand towel wrapped behind your thigh and hold on to the hand. Keep the right ankle flexed. And you'll roll this over onto your left side. Sorry, I have to move my headset. Okay, roll it onto the left side. Hold on to your top foot, your right foot, and then pull that heel back towards the sit bone. Your kneecap is pointing forward. I'm just cradling the head with my bottom arm. And then we'll take that to the other side. Actually, before we do that, let's just come right through center and take the soles of the feet together, your knees wide. So just taking a little detour here, just getting the inner thighs. Before we do the left leg. And then take the hands to the outer thighs, draw the knees together. Take your left leg up. You can grab your hand towel. That towel seems to be a good length for this. It goes right over the ball of the foot. And then you're just holding on to the ends. And you can do this with your knee bent a bit. But if you're bent, your knee is just bent really a lot, then you're not gonna get a hamstring stretch. So consider just interlacing your fingers behind the thigh instead. If using this hand towel is just not giving you enough enough length. One more breath here. And let's move the towel off to the side, bend the right knee, cross the left ankle over the right thigh, and then with the right leg moving towards you, interlace your fingers behind the right thigh. If you cannot interlace the fingers, if that's just too intense of a stretch for the outer left hip, then just bring the hand towel behind the thigh and just hold on to either end of your hand towel. Keep your left ankle flexed. Check that the breath is 
is now just smooth and steady and even. There should be very little effort in your breath, breathing through the nose. Okay, so let's place, release the, the left leg, foot comes down. Just roll onto the, sorry, release the right foot down. <laughs> roll onto the right hip and hold onto your top foot. Pull the foot back behind you, just get into the quads. And just rest your head and your bottom arm. Point the left kneecap away from you, away from the crown of your head, and then let's bring this back in. Okay, we did a lot of oblique work, so let's find a twist. Arms to the side, knees bent, feet are lifted, and take both of your legs over to the right. It gets through the chest a little too, especially if you can pin your shoulder blades down and reach out long through the left arm. And even turn your gaze over your left arm. So the sensation here is in the lower spine with the twist. It just should feel nice if it doesn't. Maybe you have a block nearby you can put under your legs to prop this up a little bit. And then pin your left shoulder blade down and there should be a little bit of stretch going across the left side of the chest. Just bring the knees back up. And lower your legs over to the left. Coming into the twist, arms are wide. Reach out a little longer through the right arm. Pin the right shoulder blade down. Maybe look out over the right arm. And if again, if this is too much of a twist, if it's just not comfortable for your spine, you can have a block between your legs or a block underneath. to a fetal position and press yourself up to seated. Okay, interlace the fingers behind you and press the knuckles down, tilt your head to one side. So you're pulling that shoulder back. If, if you were to be mirroring me, you're tilting your head to the left and pulling your right shoulder back. And then let your head circle down, chin towards your chest and then head to the other side. Now, Pull your right shoulder back and press your knuckles down. And then tilt the chin down and lift the head right up through center. Reach your arms out wide. Eagle arms with, uh, so just wrapping the one arm under, wrap at the elbows and again at the wrist. Maybe the palms come together. If they don't, bring the back of the hands together. Lift your elbows up, soften the shoulders down. And then widen your arms. Remember which arm was on top, and then switch it. Go the other way. Whichever arm was on the bottom last time, it's on the top this time. So you're crossed at the elbows, and see if you can cross again at the wrists and bring the palms together. I know that doesn't work for everyone's shoulders, so if that doesn't work for you, you can bring maybe the back of the hands together, maybe hold on to your opposite shoulders. Lift your elbows. And lower down. Just one more thing, just a little side to side action. You can circle forward on the exhale and then lean way over to one side. Maybe pull that shoulder back. Circle forward, come to the other side. Push into the hand on the floor, pull the other shoulder back and come back over to the other side. Push down, pull back shoulder, both side bend, and then back through center. Okay, so that's it. A longer sock yoga practice. <laughs> I had fun, even though it was tough. I hope you had fun too. I'll see you again soon. Namaste.